He gave all of us to serve him. But excuse me, Mr. Nehemiah, but we adventurously are God's children, and he uses us to carry on his work. Amen. I does, I does. Hmm, I'll say no more. Hmm. But even though Nehemiah had his attitude, he was desperate. Desperation isn't a good position to be in. When children are desperate, they see hot chocolate cakes. When teenagers are desperate, they cheat in exams. And when adults are desperate, they will get into an argument just to say five things. But finally, he swallowed his pride and went and asked the king of Syria if he could go to Israel and search for this prophet, Elisha. Many of us need to swallow our pride. Say, I am sorry. Swallow your pride. Say, I was wrong. Pride will kill you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility. Provide one another, for God opposes the poor, but gives the grave to the humble. After hearing Nehemiah's request and seeing his desperation, the king of Syria gave him permission to go as well as a letter to take to the king of Israel. Before he left, he told him to take a train of horses and chariots and a lot of silver and gold and some changes of clothes in the hope that a nine gift to the king of Israel would let him speak to Elisha. Talking about bribery, police say bribe, lawyers say bribe, judges say bribe, but God doesn't take bribe. And I know that I don't have to mention anything else on this because the people whom I speak to do not take bribe as well. Granted permission to see the king, but the king didn't believe his story. So Naaman gave him the letter. It said, "I am sending my servant Naaman to you. Please cure him of his leprosy." When the king read the message, the king became very angry. Let me see all the angry faces here. Come on, children. Let me see. Let's feel this story. Adults, you too. The king said in a rage, Am I a god with power over life and death? Why does the king of Syria send orders for me to heal this man of his disease? What's going on here? That king is trying to pick a fight. That's what. When Elisha, the man of God, heard about the king's anger, he sent a message to the king. Don't be angry. Send the man to me so that I can heal him and he will know that there is a true prophet here in Israel. Amen. The king agreed and granted permission. So Naaman fell off in a cloud of dust with all his horses and chariots and men and stopped outside the little shack where Elisha lived. Thank God for my shack. It keeps me humble. But when I get to heaven, I will say goodbye to my shop and hello to my mansion that God has prepared for me. Amen. Knowing that Naaman was a poor man, Elisha didn't meet him in person. Rather, he stayed inside his shop and sent his servant out to talk to him. The servant gave Naaman these instructions. Go up in the Jordan River seven times and you will be cured. Excuse me? That's it? That sounded way too simple for Naaman. It even sounded way too simple for me. Do you think Naaman was happy? Come on, I can't hear you. Do you think Naaman was happy? No, he was disappointed and very angry. I thought the prophet would at least come out here to meet me, he said. I expected him to come out here and wave his hand over me and call on the name the, and call on the name of the Lord to heal his God to heal me. He jumped on his horse and said, The river is back in my country are far cleaner than Israel muddy nasty Jordan. Why can't I go wash in them and be cured? 
In a way, she ordered his men and chariots back to Syria and they thundered away in a big cloud of dust. Do I sense why Stephanie in here? Sometimes you might get upset because the call passed the wife's phone and Sister Donna answered and instead of coming on the phone himself, he just gives her the message to give to you. Well, guess what? If he had come on the phone himself, it is the same old message that he would have said to you. Naaman's servant pleaded with him. Think about it. If he had told you to do some great complicated thing, you would have done it. Why not do the simple thing that he told you to do? What have you got to lose? Naaman thought about these words long and hard. Then ordered his men and chariots to turn around and go back to the muddy, dirty Jordan River. Did he just follow his plan? Yes! Hallelujah! He got off his horse and went down and dug himself. Nothing, but nothing happened. Why do you suppose that nothing happened? Because the prophet's servant had said to God seven times. Do it again, said one of his men. Very much aware that all his men were watching and they probably thought he was making a fool of himself. The proud Syrian captain ducked a second time. But nothing happened. Do it again. Naaman ducked a third time. Stay, nothing happened. He did a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time. Stay, nothing happened. Why? Because the prophet's servants had said to him seven times. Hadn't he? Yes. Finally, the prophet, the prophet Naaman ducked under the water.
from the Jordan after his seventh day, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, like the flesh of a young child, like the flesh of his unnamed little slave girl. Did you get that? Yes. This gospel story begins with the contrast between the mighty general Naaman and the weak and the weak or named little Israelite slave girl. But it ends with the similarities between the fair-skinned, cleansed, humble sinner, Naaman, and the fair-skinned, cleansed, humble, or named sinner, little slave girl. She was an adventure for Jesus. Naaman, Naaman the, command, the commander of the army of Syria, a powerful country. He was the king's right hand man, held in high favor. He was accustomed to power and the privilege. The bribe he took with, to the king of Israel is worth over 4.5 million in today's dollars. Naaman's life was one of power, prestige, and pleasure. In contrast is our heroine, the unnamed little Israelite slave girl. Her anonymity said it all. She lived up to her name. She was a nothing and no name, a marginalized little thing. She was probably known as a girl, as some of you like to call us, little girl, little boy. She had been captured on one of Naaman's raiding parties against Israel, stolen away from her family. Maybe they had all been murdered or taken as slaves to other homes. She is an innocent child, transplanted from all that was familiar, alone, vulnerable, totally destitute. She worshipped the true God and honored God's prophets. When Naaman returned from his raid, he had given this little girl to his wife like some Valentine the child. This little girl may have seemed worthless, but if it wasn't for her, Naaman would have most likely eventually died from leprosy. Parents and adults alike, we may be small, but we are on a mission for God. Don't count us up, for even the Bible says that the little children shall lead you. We are adventurers for Jesus. Naaman, the proud captain of the army of Syria, had to humble himself in order to be healed. He had to listen to how many, how many were the how many servants? Three servants. Then he had to go to the muddiest river in all Israel. Then he had to duck how many times in front of all his men? Not four times, not five or six times, but seven times. But when he had to humble, humble himself, he was healed and came to know God who had created him. God is a story of humility, of becoming childlike. God giving us a new life. Raising us up to walk in Christ's resurrected life. Cleansing our flesh to become like that of a little child. Full of faith and trust in Him. The little girl, the strong faith in God, impacted Naaman's wife. Naaman's wife believed and impacted her husband. Naaman believed and impacted the king of Syria. King of Syria believed and sent Naaman to see the king of Samaria. King of Samaria had little faith, but Elijah intervened and God healed Naaman. Adventurers, when you become adventurous for Jesus, great things happen. What does I mean? Come on, church. We are home now. Except great things will happen. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. When adventures become adventurous for you, I mean for Jesus, great 
things happen. Tell someone and we pray. Heavenly Father, let this unnamed little slave help us to stand up and boldly represent you. Help us to be adventurous for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.